today I would like to talk about another game that Soda Fuji played recently. Fuji played with Sente and he played against Akihito Hirose in the AO tournament. Fuji opened the game with a move pawn to um, 2f and Hirose chose for double static rook. And what we will see is, yeah, so we get the normal developing moves, protecting um, the pawn in front of the bishop. And now uh, in this position, Fuji chooses to play this waiting move, um, pawn to 9f. Um, yeah, uh, Hirose now goes on in a normal way, I would say, with pawn to 3d. And now Fuji starts uh, the attack with pawn to 2d. Now after takes takes, we get a position which is very similar to the position with colors reversed, where this waiting move has not been made. So um, takes takes, and now um, yeah, Hirose retreats in order to protect this pawn here on 3d. So in contrast to something like side pawn picker, um, Hirose does not allow Fuji to uh, take this pawn. Fuji withdraws the rook. The threat is to um, drop a pawn, of course, to 2d, which then would lead to big uh, problems for um, Sente Efogose. So therefore, uh, Hirose protects against it, and now the game develops normally um, with some pawn moves. Yeah, now the bishop diagonal opens, and um, both players start to build up their castles. But uh, there will not be any so sort of very solid castle in this entire game because both players want a quick game. In particular now, um, Hirose starts with this knight move. And um, yeah, the main point of the knight move is that um, there might be knight jumps to um, 6e. And uh, yeah, this combined with this open diagonal is extremely dangerous. So Fuji decides to close the diagonal and uh, to prevent the potential knight jump to 6e. Yeah, so uh, now Hirose again drops the pawn to, um, to AD. Note that he waited until this diagonal is closed, such that there is no bishop exchange and potential bishop drop um, to 7G in response. And yeah, after takes takes, we now, um, we now get uh, typical Fuji style. <laughs> Uh, Fuji again advancing with a silver. I think we saw this in a couple of games and maybe this is some kind of his special speciality that he's very good with just, just this one silver advanced and um, and otherwise a very um, yeah, stable position with the king in the middle where he's very flexible in which direction he wants to escape later on. The game now continues uh, with his pawn push and um, yeah, now we reach a very critical position. So Fuji played the move um, silver to 6h and now uh, it's Hirose's turn. And um, yeah, there are different things he could do here. Uh, one thing that the computer likes, which is a little bit surprising to me, um, is to just give up the rook here, which is quite interesting. So let's say takes takes and just take here right now. Um, and for instance, if I now move the gold, then just the bishop retreats and there is problems with potential pawn drops um, in um, Sente's camp. So therefore there is some very complex line which starts now like this and this and now this pawn on um, 5g is attacked and yeah for instance the computer gives some line like this takes and the position is a complete mess. Um, but I think it's it's definitely a, a, an interesting option for um, for Hirose to to play like this. So um, but yeah, I think it's, it's of course quite daring to just give up the rook like that. So I, I don't know, um, probably I would not have done this in a game either. Um, but yeah, so that was just a very uh, interesting line. So let's go back to the game. And he also now pushed the pawn instead, which also makes a lot of sense. Um, trying to undermine the center as now at the moment, this uh, bishop is no longer protected. So you can no longer take the pawn because then uh, the bishop is hanging and uh, you lose a gold. But Fuji has uh, a different way of meeting this pawn push, namely by now closing down the eighth file with this pawn drop and now kicking away the rook. So the rook runs back and now the rook is kicked back even further. And uh, one more time 
And so now it seems like he also lost a bit of time in this maneuver. Um, but it's yeah, it's not easy to evaluate at all because also, of course, the position is much more loose that uh, Fuji has right now. So Hirosa drops back the rook and Fuji decides to um, now take this pawn. Now after takes, I think both options kind of make sense. So in the game, Fuji took back with a silver. But I think there's also nothing wrong with just taking back with a pawn um, because now after takes takes sometimes you have to be careful about a bishop drop um, to 7i but at the moment so bishop drop to 7i which would attack the gold and the pawn but at the moment the gold is still defended so um, that would not yet be a problem so i think it would be playable still here um, but it's also perfectly fine uh, to take with the silver as fuji did in the game so takes and now uh, he also played this bishop move. And these are the moves which to me uh, look a bit slow, but um, to be honest, uh, these are the, probably the strong moves which I just don't understand. So um, quite interesting. So he also goes for this pawn. And then later the idea might be after taking the pawn that uh, the pawn on, um, on 5g is quite weak and maybe there could be a knight drop um, to to 4e to um, yeah, again attack these pawns even more. So a very interesting move, not one which I would have considered necessarily, but quite quite an interesting and good move, I think. For g retreats, giving some more stability and kicking away the bishop. And now, of course, um, Hirose takes this pawn and for g opens up the diagonal. So right now, uh, the bishop attacks the lands and um, Hirose cannot really afford to just give up the lands like that. So um, he defends it by pushing the knight. And now Fuji defends this pawn um, on 5g. And now threatens to kick away the bishop. So either with a gold um, or um, maybe even at some point with a, with a rook or with a pawn drop. Um, in any case, now he also decides to retreat the bishop. Um, also making way for a potential knight drop on the same square. So um, interesting move. But now Fuji directly uses this slightly awkward position of the bishop to launch an attack. And this is quite fascinating how, how this works right now. So I think at this point, Fuji probably already saw, the, saw through the following complications and he has a very, very nice motive in hand. So the point of the pawn push, first of all, is that if you take, then it's just a pawn drop. And now the bishop is in an awkward spot. So if you go back here, then for instance, by moving the gold, you can just kick the bishop away again. And then the, this whole maneuver seems pretty strange. But on the other hand, if you go back, then the position of the rook and the bishop, um, which both don't do very much, is, uh, is pretty awkward. So um, for that reason, um, yeah, for that reason in this position, Hirosa understandably decided to um, activate his rook first um, by, um, yeah, by just defending the pawn. And uh, now Fuji comes up with a very, very interesting move. So this really shows like how good of a player Fuji is. Uh, again, a move which I would not even have considered, I think. And um, to just calculate it that deeply is, is impressive. So he plays this move, um, pawn to 6d. So, I mean, the first idea is, of course, to um, to block the bishop. Secondly, you might threaten at some point to promote um, promote the pawn. And, um, I mean, the first obvious tactical justification for this is that you can't take the pawn because then there is just this uh, knight drop and uh, you lose either the rook or the bishop. So mm -hmm. that's not possible. And, um, yeah, therefore, the natural move is to take this pawn right now. Yeah, and now um, Fuji activates the silver. As I said, another one of these games where Fuji has one very active silver to, combined with some pawns, and then somehow makes this magic to to um, yeah to to use this one silver and a couple of pawns to disrupt um, the pieces of his opponent. In this case, bishop and uh, rook. 
So right now, of course, uh, both of these pieces are not doing very much. And uh, now Hirosa understandably wants to activate these pieces because otherwise there is also this pawn drop to 7d looming. And yeah, therefore it's very logical what um, Hirosa does here, namely this pawn drop. And now Fuji comes up with a very, very nice tactic. Um, and I think he probably has seen this tactic already when he sacrificed the pawn here. So uh, the tactic works as follows, takes, takes, and now this beautiful pawn drop on um, 6d. So what is the idea of this pawn drop? Well, this square is protected three times, but um, if the bishop or the rook takes, um, Fuji just wins material. On the other hand, of course, you don't ju just want to retreat. So the most logical thing at first sight would be to take with a silver, but here, maybe you can try to pause the video and you can try to think about what Fuji would have done. And well, maybe you found it. So it's just a pawn drop to um, 7d. Attacking the bishop. And if the bishop runs, you can just take, take, and a beautiful double attack on um, the rook and the bishop. So um, very, very nice motive, which um, yeah basically started earlier and now becomes very clear after this pawn drop to um, 6d what he has in mind. So before I didn't really understand it, but after seeing this pawn drop, it's pretty clear that you uh, can't take it with a silver in a nice way. And um, yeah, so Hirosa saw this as well and now decided to take it with the bishop, giving up material. So at this point, um, I think Fuji is probably slightly better to, to moderately better because he's now winning material. And after takes, takes, he now um, yeah, comes up with a, a nice, nice way of continuing his attack. So from this point onwards, there is no real breathing room for, um, for Hirosa anymore. So Fuji drops another pawn. I guess if you take, there's probably just a bishop drop um, to 7c, which is super annoying, attacking everything and next move bishop promotes. So uh, Hirosa is basically forced to go back with a silver. Yeah, and now Fuji continues his attack with this bishop move to um, 5e. This is also not a move which I would have immediately considered to be honest, but um, which is like super strong, I think. So now you put a lot of pressure on this diagonal. And um, yeah, in this position, um, according to the computer, Hirosa made the final mistake of the game or the decisive mistake. Let's say um, the position is probably already better for Fuji, but um, a much more tenacious defense, according to the computer, would be this silver drop here. Looks very passive, to be honest. And um, yeah, after this drop, I think it's also clear that Fuji should be should be better. Um, so yeah, what did he do instead? Uh, I mean, he played the move, which looks quite logical, uh, just defending this silver with the gold. But now Fuji came up with a very um, clever move, namely this bishop drop to um, 9e. At first glance, this move does not seem to be that great because um, yeah, this point is already protected once. And now if you run back with a, with a rook, the question is what the idea of this move really is. Um, so maybe again, you can pause the video and you can try to find um, the continuation that Fuji had in mind. And well, um, it's a very, very strange combination, especially for a chess player, because it involves sacrificing this bishop and then dropping another piece there. So it's in the game he, he took on 7c. He rose and now took back with the rook. And then it's clear that uh, yeah, you won the rook, you can take it with the bishop and the position is good for Fuji. But the main point I think was that if you take with the gold, then Fuji has this very, very nice knight drop to the rim. So the knight on the rim in this case is not dim at all, but it just attacks the rook. And now um, there is a very, yeah, very bad choice options for um, for Sente. So either Hirosa would uh, withdraw the rook when the silver would fall with a promotion, or otherwise the rook would fall with a knight promotion, and this bishop would also stay incredibly strong. So um, therefore, yeah, um, 
basically he rose the saw this and he didn't take back with gold but he took back with a uh, rook instead so now after takes takes um fuji dropped a rook to 6b and um, he rose a resigned so this might seem a bit early um but uh, on the other hand if you take a look at the castles i mean there was basically no not a single attacking move that he rose could play in the game and fuji's castle is perfectly intact whereas after this rook drop it's super awkward already to defend the king so for instance let's say if um, you defend by um, dropping a silver then i think there would be something like this knight drop here threatening to take uh, here with a checkmate and let's say after takes takes promotion is threatening and uh, it's yeah super obvious that um, <clears throat> fuji is winning on the other hand, if you drop a knight to maybe avoid losing another general on the square, probably you could still drop the knight, uh, but there's also this move, which now threatens um, a silver drop on um, 5a, which would lead to a mate, or just taking the lands and you cannot defend against both, losing even more material. Yeah, so very, very impressive game by, um, by Fuji, I think. Um, yeah, Hirose didn't make that many mistakes, to be honest. I mean, um, maybe he should have gone for this crazy looking rook sacrifice in the opening. But afterwards, it was just a very, very smooth and, um, and beautiful game by Fuji, especially with this combination of the silver and the pawns in the center, which deflected uh, the rook and um, the bishop. And he was able to, with this one silver, uh, to create a lot of problems um, for Hirose. So thanks a lot for watching this game and see you next time.